to No Capes, the show where we talk about creator-owned comics with creators who own comics. Uh, with me today is someone who we've talked about many times on the show, the wonderful Marissa Louise. Marissa, could you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm a colorist and I recently moved to Philadelphia. It's a very cool city. Um, I don't know what to say about myself. <laughs> I went to art school. <laughs> uh, it was a choice. Um... Uh, I like to grow plants. I like to paint. Um... <laughs> and you've worked on many of my favorite books. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you haven't already, go back and check out the episode about Grumble, which was a really fun book that Marissa worked on. Um, and uh, yeah, come back and check out the rest of this episode. Or watch and this episode first and go check out that episode. Either way. <laughs> Buy copies of Grumble so that we have the cachet to do a book we really want to do in smell a vision Alright. Alright. That sounds fun. Alright. Everybody go buy Grumble. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a really solid book. Like, if you like... If you like anthropomorphic dog stories and you like absolute shit heel characters that make you love them... <laughs> then you'll love Grumble. Yeah. If you love father-daughter stories, bittersweet stories, absolute goofiness. <laughs> Weird magic shit. Yeah, it's so fun. It is, oh, it That really was one of my is. favorite books ever. Yeah, it was... I, I missed it. I was so sad when we had to end that. Yeah, it was such a good ride, though. It was such a wild ride. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I love that book. <laughs> yeah. No. If if it's good enough for John Waters, it's good enough for me. That's what I think. That's right. That's right. Oh boy. Yeah. My my partner is a big John Waters fan and we've watched many a uh, uh, movie analysis thing about John Waters work. Uh, I finally just saw Pink Flamingos. Oh, we, like, that's I, on our list. I love it. I love it. I was scared because I didn't want to see the dog eating thing. Yeah. But, or the dog, the poop eating thing. Yeah. But I, I was like, I was like, what's really fascinating about it is it's, it's like really beautifully shot, like really beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. The characters are super compelling and it like, <clears throat> it remains effective to this day. Like a lot of this stuff stays shocking and you're like, blah. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, I mean, there's some I'm stuff that's weirdo. never not going to be. Yeah. And like that that movie could still shock me. I'm like, how did this how did this like fifty year old movie maintain this? It's right. amazing. Um, have you watched the Culture Cruise episode about John Waters? Uh uh. Go check it out. Matt Baum is okay. really cool. Um really sweet guy. Uh he's had a whole YouTube channel called Culture Cruise, which is about queerness in the the T V and movies. Um oh. And did an episode about John Waters. Did an another episode recently about the Muppets being super gay. And it was really yeah. good. Really good that episode. Makes sense. Um, okay. And he's a live streamer as well. Um, just really chill hangout streams, knitting and playing video games and stuff. Um, that sounds great. Love Culture Cruise. And, I'll have to uh, check that out. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Just got some really, really cool insights and just a really fun presence in general. Um, yeah. And yeah, if you like John Waters stuff, then there's a really cool, like, I think it's almost two hour episode about it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to watch it. Yeah. Uh, but for today's purposes, we've got something sound, not quite as shocking. Not but, quite as shocking. But there was still a couple of uh, times where I turned the page and I was like, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a few things that got me too. I was like, oh, I didn't yeah. know he had that in him. Right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like... Yeah, like, Ryan is no stranger to the show. We're talking about Chum today, which is a Ryan K. Lindsay written book with Mark Dale, Sammy Cavella, and Nick Shaw on board. Um, Ryan is a No Capes alum now. Finally got Ryan on the show this season. <laughs> Congratulations. And it wouldn't be a season of No Capes if we didn't talk about one of Ryan's books. And hopefully <laughs> Ryan never stops because I don't want to run out of books to talk about on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And hopefully Ryan never stops, because I just want him to be successful. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Season one, 
started and ended with a Ryan book, except oh. the first episode is the lost episode, as I was telling you before we started. <laughs> uh, and we finished off talking about Eternal with Fell Hound, and that was a really oh, fun, yeah. fun talk too. So this is one of the first books of Ryan's I ever saw before Eternal even came out. So I'm really, really chuffed to come back and talk about this. And just looking at this cover design is incredible. Yeah. Like yeah, this. Sammy did some really cool stuff on that. Yeah, Sammy's work is really, really fun. So I love seeing when Sammy and Ryan pa partner up. It's yeah. really nice to see the, the, the two names pop up on Twitter together every so often. Yeah. Um... But yeah, do you want to de describe the book a little for everyone? Yeah, it's called The Surf Noir, which is, I think, so super fun. I think it takes place in Australia, like an island off Australian coast, right? That's a or good point. Just... I didn't actually look that up at all. Because there's some, like, there's some very Australian slang in there. I was like, there is. wait, I... does this take place in Australia? <laughs> what was the name of the island again? A Kingston? Yeah, that, that sounds it? right. Something I like think he that. might have made up the island. Yeah. Maybe? Well, there is... We'll have to ask Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kingston is the administrative centre of the Australian external territory of Norfolk Island. So, oh. could be inspired by that area? It's a mm -hmm. sort of a, an island just off of Sydney. Oh. Island, from what I'm seeing here. So I'll, I'll confirm that as we read along, but um, yeah, I'd say it could be inspired by that sort of area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense, actually. Kingston was a brutal outpost for banished British prisoners, home to the descendants of bounty mutineers. Oh, well, then that sounds right. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense for the, the tone of this book. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a really grim book. Uh, it's like a classic noir. It really is. Like it, it I, I really loved the the energy it had to it. But like, mm -hmm. like you said, they like this surfer island vibes instead of the the grim nineteen twenties city business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a really interesting take on the noir genre, and uh, I loved it. Yeah, it's really Kingsford. Fun. That's the one. Kingsford. Oh, Kingsford. There's a lot of places called Kingsford in Australia, so, you know, it wouldn't be so far. Okay, there's no Kingsford Island, but there is a bunch of suburbs called Kingsford around various cities in Australia, so. I think it might be a little bit of a... A bit, bit of a, a mishmash there, yeah. Like a, yeah, yeah. I should judge. I'll just bug Ryan about it next time I talk to him. Like, hey, what what inspired the the setting? <laughs> yeah, what's the real setting? What's give, the real story? Yeah, give me all the behind the scenes. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting, fun surf noir sort of setting and story. Like, it's it's a pretty classic down on their luck detective. You know, the, yeah. the femme fatale. We've got the reporter. We've got the crime boss. It's like all the classic. It's all the classic noir content. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the uh, the the beautiful target of everyone's affections, who actually yeah. turns out to be possibly the most sinister person of them all. <laughs> yeah. And they're all a bunch of dummy roughnecks. They really are. Oh boy, like they are all hot messes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I was, I was rereading it in prep for today, and I was just like, "Yeah, you guys all need to get your shit together." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we like issue yeah. our spoiler warnings? So yeah, we actually, I'm start... gonna, we're we're on page one, but I'm just gonna let you all know right now. Like that's that should be enough. You can see this gorgeous art that Sammy's done with the 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 lovely lettering and the coloring of through the whole team. You know, Mark Dale's done really great work on the noir coloring with the the splashes of red throughout the book, and yeah. Nick's done really great lettering, and of course Dan Hill. Uh, I'm not going to say back again because she came out after this, but Dan Hill, oh. another editing team up with Ryan. Yeah. Um, 
So the team's done a great, great job. Go grab this. It's like eight bucks or something on Comixology right now, I think was how much I, I paid so. for it. Go yeah, grab it. Yeah, that's for the full set. Yeah, for the whole for the whole book. Go grab it, read it, and then come back and watch the rest of the episode so that you don't have to worry about spoilers because it's a nice, short, little compact book all in one run, and it's going to be almost impossible to talk about it without spoilers starting yeah. now. <laughs> I was... So, when I read it, I actually read it twice just to, like, you know appreciate the form let's yeah. say uh and like um ryan did some really nice setup in the beginning uh to that pays off really nicely um i like this idea that just like the island ruins everything and it doesn't matter what you do right but it was like it was kind of interesting that like you know you get the impression that Penny never left the island, but everybody else did at yeah. some point or like was not originally from the island. So then Penny's like kind of the personification of the island and just this like fucking sucky dude. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he's he's like the epitome, like the the concept given form of peaked in high school and never left yeah. a small town. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like I like to think of him kind of like as like evil Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's just like a dumb burnout, except super mean, <laughs> right? And and surprisingly jacked. Yeah, <laughs> for someone who doesn't actually seem to work out or anything. No, I mean, throwing bodies off a boat is heavy work. Yeah. Lobbing, lobbing buckets of fish parts at people. I'm sure you need, you need a little, you need a little, little, need a little, for that. little something in the. The only thing, did you get an idea of like what the, oh wait, I just figured it out. Cause, uh, uh, I was a little confused. Swampy's partner said that like, he'd always disappear for an hour. And mm. I was like, I didn't understand like why he would disappear for an hour, but now I just realized it was because he was undercover. Yeah. He was reporting back to... Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I actually kind of missed... Like, I read that, but didn't put two and two together properly until later. Yeah. 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 There's some subtlety in the book. I Like, I really appreciate how, like, Ryan doesn't spell everything out, you know? There's some interesting stuff, like, especially, like... um you know, because Summer loses the baby, like, you sort of, you get the impression that, that that's what causes her, like, like, she gets this, like, post more or postpartum psych psychosis, you know, yeah. like, like, she's so distraught about not having the baby that she just, like, feels like she didn't get what she deserves, so just destroys everything. Yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. And I think that makes sense, you know, like, because at the start of the book that's talking about Summer, like, she loves the island. She's been here her whole life, you know. She she really uh, is a part of it. And then suddenly yeah, she goes on a murder restaurant. spree to escape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. She's had a bit of a, a mental break after one too many like pretty traumatic things yeah you know like her yeah because and... we presume her dad dies too right yeah he's like she he's took over the restaurant exactly um and her and the cop whose name i'm forgetting right this second uh standard that's the one her and standard uh it's revealed were trying for a long time after they moved back to the island yeah. and like that's got to be pretty heavy yeah, like especially it, like it, a lot of people, over it. yeah, really want babies and they feel like something's wrong with them if they can't conceive and and it can cause a lot of tension in their relationship. And I actually really appreciate how much like Ryan will understate those kinds of things. Yeah. And like, it is interesting that like, you know, she eventually conceives, but it's by... um penny 
Mm. So even if she like leaves the island, she can't leave the island. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The island comes with her. Yeah. yeah Ryan always weaves some really interesting concepts into his work. He he really does. Um, and like I don't need to say this because I've already told him many times, and I know that he wants to do it himself. But more dear editor, please. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to do some pinups for that that I never finished. So definitely we should do it and I will finish those. <laughs> yes, and I will do one too. Let me draw the deer man. I love yeah. that book so much and it still makes me so sad that nobody has picked Dear Editor yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like somebody, please. Next season, next season. I don't know if it's going to happen at the end of this year or if it'll be next year but next season somebody read dear editor and pick that and now that you've like have said it at before we started i'm actually really seeing that y of course these are australians yeah. like like we're like two pages in and someone's about to get murdered and he's like yeah hey mate nice day for it and i'm like <laughs> why did because i'm just I, I think sometimes I forget when I'm reading an Australian's work, you know, yeah. and I'm so used to so many comics being so America American. focused yeah. that I just like wasn't paying attention to that at all. But no, it makes, yeah, it makes complete I, sense now. I noticed it because there were some phrases where I didn't really understand what they meant. I was like, this must be an Australian thing. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I forgot which phrases they were, but I was like, uh, I can kind of context clue this, but I don't really know. Right, and, and yeah, like the second bubble as well, a goddamn cracker. I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh, that's what it was. I thought... <laughs> I thought I thought he was calling the guy swimming up to him a goddamn cracker. And no, like... he's like, great day. <laughs> cracker of a day. Wait, is Cracker a good thing down yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, so like, it's, it's, oh. it's like, you ripper. Same sort of thing. Yeah, if you ever hear an Australian <laughs> say, you bloody ripper, or ripper of a day, or cracker of a day, that's a good thing. Okay, okay, okay. Because, like, up here, if somebody says cracker, it means something very different. Yes, yes. Especially where I live. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. Uh, but yeah, no, no, if someone says it like that, like, in a, talking about a thing, like an object okay, or a kidding. day or an experience, especially an Australian. Yeah. It's a good thing. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> there was another one a little later on in the book. I forgot what it was, but it's like, this has to be an Australian phrase. Yeah. If you're, if you're ever reading an Australian book or an Australian character and you have questions, just DM me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If I, well, if... you were Simon. Simon's up at all hours of the day. Like, I'm like, when do you sleep, dude? And like, uh, cause like I'll arrange like little parties for colorists. Yep. And um, and if you are a colorist listening to this and you haven't gotten an invite, please just DM me because it may be that I don't know you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, uh, yeah. So I'll like try to arrange some little parties every once in a while and then uh simon will be there <laughs> like even if i arrange it for like austrian time he's like i'm awake <laughs> like oh my god simon go to sleep <laughs> it's the other side of the world like you can't be awake right now oh no i, I get that like i i get up at some absolutely absurd hours for ttrpg stuff sometimes do you surf no i'm nowhere near the beach <laughs> like the, no. the nearest beach is like an hour well, I think it's like a 45 minute drive, but it's like a three what? hour public transport and I don't drive. That's close to the beach. Oh, that's not close to the yeah, beach. So, so for, for us, it's, hang on, one bus, one train, another bus, and then another bus to get to the beach. Yeah, yeah. I always, like, uh, my dad was supposed to teach me to surf before he died. He was a marine biologist. So he was supposed to teach me to surf before he died, but he never, like, got the chance. Because in Oregon, like, you just can't surf. Up. Well, some psychos do. 
but it's like you, it's pretty dangerous surfing up there because the water is like so cold it'll give you hypothermia and the rocks are like just like murder spikes right so it wasn't exactly the place to learn to surf yeah but maybe yeah. i'll learn to surf out here like nice east coast gentle waves warm water yeah the same like to here it's like it's it's very very warm very tame like nice waves and stuff like that but like this other than the great white sharks yeah, yeah but they don't they're just curious they don't they don't really think you're dinner <laughs> yeah i will you start, i am gonna unless have you start to get flapping around rain. like a seal yeah yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna get on ryan's case about this this uh this shark uh besmirchment it's because they are sharks are wonderful i love sharks well i mean in in ryan's defense in this particular setting it really does seem <laughs> like penny is responsible for these sharks being man eaters <laughs> penny yeah penny is more responsible for the sharks being terrible than any sort of innate shark nature it's true <laughs> yeah um, That's a good point. It, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like like these particular sharks were made vicious. Yeah. Because they were regularly, you know, they throw chum in the water and then throw people in after them. And so these sharks have become accustomed to being fed people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still like really interested in this idea of like Penny being some sort of like innate element of the island that's that makes it so awful. Because in the start of the book, uh, Standard does say, like, everything horrible in the island is Penny's fault. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Excuse me. And I love how we're, and, like, like, immediately introduced to just how violent the island is, too. Like, this yeah. guy swims out. Uh, you know, obviously, it's a hit put on by Penny. But, like, yeah. he's trying to kill this one guy. And then this guy just, like, tries to drown him immediately. Yeah. Yeah unnamed assassin is drowned yeah. immediately right not just not just th you know stop him and throw him away and swim back to shore it's like no fuck no, you mate kill yeah 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 it's a it's such an interesting book like ryan ryan always finds like really interesting angles yeah he does i love this writing um, I always find like it really interesting how what Ryan can just drop us into the middle of a story. Oh yeah. And you don't feel lost. Like within yeah. a few pages you have all the information that you need to be able to keep up. Yeah. And then everything else can be revealed gra gradually as much as he wants to reveal. Yeah, yeah. But he provides enough context for everything without you having to stress out about it yeah and i like i like how he doesn't over explain things you know um because like you know like we were talking about with um summer having issues conceiving yeah and like like that that tells so much but he did it in such like a quiet and subtle way and it's like richer on rereading it than it is on initial reading. Yeah, uh, I, I, I found a lot of little things like that as we went through, um, like th through rereading it, that there were all these little subtle things woven together. Yeah, yeah, he's really good at that. And I liked the the big black shapes Sammy used, like the he used a lot of silhouettes. Yes, that was interesting. Yes, I really like that. And also, I really like this one panel, or the, this this page here, where um, in every frame that Gus isn't speaking to or being spoken to, he's just surrounded by a white void. Oh, yeah, that was nice. You know, like, nothing else exists around him right now, except for yeah, he's just... what he's thinking about. Which is summer. Yeah, yeah, that was like I was I really liked that moment. I think that was really nice. That was yeah. handled really, really well, really uh told a lot. Right? And and 
you've got uh, you know standard fucking just gallivanting around the bar like a dickhead showing off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, when I was rereading it, I noticed like what Standard was doing in the background. I was like, oh, that's really... That's interesting. Like, he's still... He's also an island guy, even though he denies it, you know? Yeah, right? Yeah, he's just there partying, being a dickhead. <laughs> and honestly, like... The white guy with the long blonde hair and a fucking trilby. I know. Oh my god. <laughs> That's such a yuppie hipster surfer town in Australia look. It really is. Oh, okay, okay. There's a I lot... mean, he looks like a dickhead, but... Yeah, there's a lot of them. Like, if he wasn't a cop, he probably would just be in a singlet or like a loose t-shirt, maybe a, a short sleeve button down, unbuttoned, hanging out in the bar with the same rest of the outfit. Oh, okay, like he's okay. he's only as put together as he is because he's a cop. Yeah. It's just yeah, like that look. I almost expect him to be vegan and pull out an acoustic guitar. Yeah, probably. Byron Bay is full of guys that look like standard. <laughs> I like that. Um... Yeah, like, we mentioned this a little bit at the start, but I like that everybody is just, like, fucking idiots. <laughs> like, they're just dumb and making bad decisions. Yeah, right? They, yeah, they are. They're just, like, completely... Even the reporter, like, she's pretty stupid, too. <laughs> yeah, right? She's really reckless. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like that she's keeping files on everybody in the island but that also seems like a super bored islander thing to do you right know? yeah no that's what i mean like she it doesn't seem like she's necessarily doing that um uh not doing that because she's doing it for a sense of professionalism yeah, no, she's, she's just, just doing bored. it because she wants to because there's nothing to do on an island yeah right yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like, they could be useful. Oh, yeah. Could be. Like, hopefully she pieces everything together at the end. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, hopefully she's got enough information in those files to figure out what happened after she gets back from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's lucky that Summer didn't actually kill her. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... It's, it's really, like, really interesting watching Summer manipulate Gus at the start as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, she, she, what is she up to? Like, this didn't seem like the kind of thing that you would expect from this person at the start of the book, but very, very quickly yeah. realize that, yeah, like, no, Summer is, is as dark as everybody else on the island. <clears throat> you know, what's interesting, too, is, like, like... You know, you sort of get the sense she maybe didn't start out that way and like yeah. she takes a turn, but then maybe she did just because this island is so shitty and like it's she's a she seems to have a few, you know, like turns. Yeah, well there's this the one part where like I feel like she got murderous because of the incident and taking a bit of a mental break. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the the manipulation and the shadiness and stuff seems like it was always there during the scene where she's um, uh, sleeping with Penny and Gus turns up and she's talking yeah. about how she doesn't give a shit about Penny and kind of hates him and yeah. only you know, you only take a fuck buddy like this for a cut two reasons. So I was like, okay, so yeah, yeah you you have got some darkness inside that you, maybe you've been trying to pretend wasn't there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to, you, to you what extent? Pretended to be civilized. <laughs> yeah. To, to what extent? We don't really know, but yeah. there was definitely some shadiness going on there before everything else happened because she knew who Penny was and what he was. 
and still chose to go down that path for her yeah. own gain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that still leaves a little bit of openness too, though, because, like, is it, like, she's just desperate to get off the island? Yeah, exactly. The one that sells the manipulation to me is when she's, like, talking on the phone to her friend on the boat when she's disposing of the body. Oh, yeah, of yeah. Swampy's body. And she's, like, talking about how she played, like, a bunch of guys against each other. And I was like, oh, this is, like, a shitty 20-year-old conversation that I've heard before. Like, And right. I'd be like, ooh, no, we are, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, like, that's the kind of conversation I'd hear in a bar at 4 a.m. And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> right? It, it kind of reminds me of that one vine. And they were roommates. <laughs> it's, it's like the kind of conversation you expect to hear from just a young 20 something person yeah that hasn't really learned how the world works yet and thinks they're smarter than everybody else yeah yeah and that they can evade consequences yeah they're the one person <laughs> who will never face consequences yeah nope it's gonna catch up to you and it did it, it caught up to pe- to summer too yeah and like, it's caught up to everybody. Yeah, like she sets. Yeah, she sets Gus onto Swampy, and it's like that wasn't smart because it turns out he's a cop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's it it's like a fun it's a fun little noir romp. Yeah, it is. And, and like, like how cold and calculating Summer is, is revealed immediately in that instance, too. Like, how she's thinking to herself about, you know, how Gus is drunk enough to believe that this is going to work out. Yeah. You're like, oh, no, she's had this planned for, I don't know how yeah. long for, whether it's from last night or yeah. whether she's been sizing him up and how he's obsessed with her for a while. Yeah. You know, like, that was never super revealed but yeah. she's immediately got a plan yeah <laughs> whether she came up with it on the spot or whether she's been planning something like this for a while she's smart and uh she's using everything on this island to her advantage mm, is she smart or is she like well she thinks she's smart reckless <laughs> yeah she thinks she's smart, at least. She thinks she's smart. She's yeah. acting smart. Whether yeah. she's actually clever or not is a different story. She, Because uh, she seems to be on the back foot a lot during this plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's, <laughs> she's been thinking of... about it, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I guess she shows more thought than, like, Penny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, like, smart for the island. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it could be that she's smart and reckless. Could be that she thinks she's smarter than she is and also reckless. Yeah. Or it could be that she's just plain reckless. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? But she is very reckless. Absolutely. And, yeah, is is playing defense almost immediately. Yeah. You know, like later that day she's already on yeah. the defensive because yeah, standard on the wrong standard plate. can tell that something's not right. Yeah. It's interesting, like, I, maybe I mentioned this before, but I do like the dummy cop idea. Although I guess, like, in the Raymond Chandler books, like, the cop isn't super smart, you know? Like, he's mm. not like... He's not like pro or, you know, Sherlock... <laughs> He's like, kind of like, uh, I'm just a schlubby dum dum, but I know people. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, standard and his like, macho bullshit, reckless, arrogant attitude, uh, thinking he's better than everyone, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is not a stretch for Australian police. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I believe honestly, that. is not a stretch. You don't have to be a genius to get into the police here. <laughs> I saw a very funny TikTok, I think. Um, you can edit this part out if you want. 
<laughs> like, it starts with two guys, like one guy is getting the COVID test, right? And he's, yep. he's like trying to buy it off a guy who's like dealing it like drugs. And then a cop rolls up. He's like, ah, what are you guys doing? And he's like, uh, uh, buying drugs. And he's like, oh, okay, carry on. Wait, is that a COVID test? <laughs> and the guy like runs and takes the test. And then it's like positive. And he goes, it's positive. And the cop starts running the other direction and starts chasing the cop. It was really good. Yeah, that's that's honestly not a stretch either. Like, there are a <laughs> bunch of cops here that are refusing to uphold the border restrictions and get back. Like, we uh, was it like 100,000 cops or something walked off the force because they refused to get vaccinated. Not sure if yeah, it was if it here. was that many, but there was definitely a one and more than three zeros involved. Uh, you know, people who are attracted to power are usually the people who shouldn't have it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yes, yeah, like standard is not an unreasonable representation of police in Australia. To be yeah. honest, it's yeah, it's 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 bonkers. So, like, standard is pretty, pretty good depiction of the average Australian cop. Yeah, I think Ryan has uh, pretty good insights into people, and like, he's he's like such an empathetic person. I think that's part of why he does such a good job, like observing people and and like uh, reflecting those observations. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And he does like he talks. He talks to a lot of people. He meets a lot of people. Yeah. So you know, and like between him and his brothers, they've all met like all kinds of people all over the place, and have got like you say, like really good insights. Yeah. To to be able to like take all of that knowledge of all these different people and write these characters out of all those experiences. Yeah. And, yeah, I I really, really enjoy all of Ryan's characters, even the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah, he does write charming people. Even though, like, they can be charming as as hell and you can enjoy reading them, but you really want them to die. (laughs) Yeah. Like, Penny is the biggest dickhead. I'm looking at the page right now of him when he, he does cover that guy in chum and throw him over the edge. Yeah. And it's like, my guy, you probably could have gotten a lot more valuable information out of this dude before you killed him if you just, you know, kept your temper in check. But then, as as Ryan writes right here, he's like, Penny was an animal, territorial, aggressive, and not as smart as other men. Yeah. He's just meaner than everybody else, which is how he got into power. Right, right. Not because he's smarter. He's just meaner, and other people flock to mean people. Yeah, or, like, get out of their way. Like, it's yeah. too much trouble to deal with. You're exactly. Like, oh. Exactly. But that's, once again, people attracted to power, the ones that should not have it. Right. And and Penny is such a typical, like, beach bum-looking dude, too, for here. Yeah. The scraggly beard and the wavy blonde hair and... Terrible dress sense. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah, I loved I love the fashion choices that Sammy made in this book. Yeah, yeah I've honestly I kind of feel like um Sammy and Ryan just like took a walk around Byron Bay and Bondi Beach and just made reference from that. Yeah. Yeah, I do wonder if like Sammy knew or if Cause he's is he Italian or is I he? I think so. That's ringing a bell. Uh, um, don't don't quote or me if on like that. Ryan sent him reference pictures or something. Yeah, I, I look honestly. If Ryan just said Google Byron Bay, <laughs> you'd be set. Yeah. <laughs> I've been rereading these essays from the late nineties about like um, the trends of. Uh, uh, of capitalism in the internet, and it's like chilling. <laughs> it's so chilling. It's uh, it's from a 
a magazine called The Baffler. It's called Commodify Your Descent. And mm. so it talks about when, uh, I'm not sure how old you are, but there was a time when the internet did not have advertisements on it. I, I'm from the dial-up days. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you remember, there was a time when the internet did not have advertisements on yeah, the, it. The, it the, up... the most we got was little tiny banner ads at the top of a page. Tiny banners, yeah. And, uh, and uh, the essay talks about what it meant when Wired Magazine offered the first like advertising space on their website like cuz they they did big like magazine style advertising mm. inside their articles um on their website and they were the first one to do it and so this essay is like this is really fucked up and this is the end of free information yep and i was reading uh, the other day the guy who invented pop up ads regrets ever inventing them i cannot imagine inventing something like that that you're like, that you have to regret for the rest of your life and think about like how much you ruined everything. Yeah. Oh, There's boy. no way they could have known. Like yeah. I don't blame the individual, I blame the system, but. Yeah, like man, yeah. Like I couldn't live with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the system has taken what maybe could have been useful and turned yeah. it into like one of the most toxic things in existence. Yeah. On the yeah. internet. Because yeah, because like, like pop ups. Imagine pop ups that like connected you with other people, or like connected you to a, like in depth articles on the thing you were reading, or yeah. like pop ups that were like fun little jokes. Like it could be so, <laughs> it could be so many other things. Yep, but instead <laughs> it's just spam, porn, and viruses. Yeah. Uh, it's rough out there. It's yep. rough online. Yep. But yeah, Kids, yeah, no. There I'm, was a day. I'm, I'm from the days of di of dial up. Do you remember one of those like super fun things to do way back, uh, way back was like actual web surfing, where you would type in a random address and hope you got something that wasn't porn. <laughs> um, I don't know if I ever really did that. Oh, it was great because like nothing was organized before yeah. Google, and so you would just like you would have to guess maybe the source of information. Like you, I would be typing in like crazy URLs to try and guess stuff. I was really fun. It was fun. You could yeah. end up in some weird spaces online. It was it was great. Oh man, yeah, there it's... there was some some strange stuff out there. Like I I remember when Ask Jeeves was still the main browser oh, that everyone yeah. used yeah <laughs> before before uh, google search was a big thing yeah that was like when they were just starting indexing stuff and like ash Jeeves was the first one to like have any kind of database yeah oh boy yeah <laughs> i don't different. miss those days <laughs> and the days when a phone call could ruin everything a phone call can still ruin everything. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, while you're on the internet. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. In the middle of doing something really important. Okay. And then... And then the phone it's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now a phone call just emotionally ruins your day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, like, I, I glare at my phone anytime it starts buzzing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, this better be important. If it could have been a text message, I'm going to be mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh boy but this reporter she is so clumsy yeah she doesn't know what she's doing yeah i just i just looked up again where she's just come back into the restaurant after uh penny and standard are in there and uh standard's given some of the divorce papers and and she's just so bullheaded and really clumsy about her interrogations yeah yeah you sort of get the sense that the reason she's the local reporter is because she's the only one with a computer right and she's like she's like the island busybody so she decided to monetize it. oh yeah yeah that's a good point like at, at what point does do we ever see like what 
paper she works for, or does she just have a blog? At the very last page. <laughs> oh, that's right. That is, yeah, the I do editor, remember that now. You wrote a great headline. How about an article? <laughs> that's right. Right, and then yeah, like we are, we are given such a, a massive insight into how reckless and not as smart as she thinks she is. Summer is when Standard just walks outside to call Swampy. Yeah. And the phone starts ringing on loud in the fridge mm-hmm. in the restaurant. Yeah. Not only did she store his clothes and belongings in the fridge where people could see it if they walked back there. Yeah. But not didn't put it in a box or nothing. But she didn't even turn the phone on silent, let alone turn it off. Or take out the battery or fucking smash it with a hammer. Yeah. You know how easy it is to break a cell phone? Right? I'm very I mean, good at that. <laughs> she works in a restaurant. There are so many kinds of industrial solvents that she should have for cleaning the restaurant that could have just dealt with that. Just oh. throw it in a bucket with some of those. Just throw it in a bucket and that phone is done. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, she's probably throw it got... in with the ancient dripping chicken. <laughs> right? She's probably got some acetone in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just throw it in a bucket with some acetone and it'll melt. Like, all of the casing and stuff will melt. It'll be an unrecognizable blob. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the c- circuitry might still be there, but, like, the important distinguishing features that would tell you whose phone that was. Yeah. But, no, she kept it and left it on loud. Also, yeah. the variant cover that they show at the end of vol- Volume 1 in the Collected Edition... Um, <laughs> by Vic Malhotra. It's <laughs> so cool. I, th- yeah. I think it's Gus surfing with the gun. Oh, but yeah. it's just such a dynamic, like the strong blacks and the white highlights and everything. There's, like, it's a three-tone image, but it's so well done. It's so striking. Yeah. Uh, Ryan has, like, he's really good at finding good artists. Yeah. Yeah, every every single book that Ryan has has written has looked incredible. Cause he's got such a good team. Yeah, like uh, Chris when he worked on She with Ryan. Uh, Chris's work on that is just top rate. Like all yeah. the the Art Nouveau stylings to it in the sci fi setting is just mm. that yeah. re- that really tickles all the nice nice parts of my brain that like that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, every every book comes out looking amazing. I also really love the the page where uh, Summer is feeding bits of uh, Swampy to the sharks. Yeah. Just like the design of that with like the black silhouettes of the sharks broken up by the ripples of the water, and it's just so nicely done. I like how um, Swampy's bits washing up on the beach yeah imply that the sharks only eat live people <laughs> yeah right because uh, they're like we don't need your leftovers <laughs> and like she didn't even take the ring off no <laughs> she's an idiot right because like those bits don't look shark eaten they look like they've been chopped off yeah yeah And, and yeah, of course, like, Standard is just standing on the beach as those bits all wash up on the shore. <laughs> it was like she, she couldn't predict that those bits were going to wash back up. Like, at least some of them. Yeah. This, the, everyone just keeps botching everything they do in this, in this story. And that's just kind of the, the, the situation with this island, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're all a bunch of fuck-ups. Yeah, and they're all just doomed to repeat history. Yeah. And Summer just brains Gus as Standard is approaching the house. Yeah, because she has no plan, so she's just like, uh, 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 hit him with a thing. Right? Pretend to be the victim. (laughs) Yep, and... 
yeah, just, 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 yeah, just pretending that she's not the one behind it, all of this, yeah. causing all of these problems. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling how easily she plays everyone on this island, but also <laughs> how catastrophically she's fucking up everything she's planning because she's just not giving it any forethought. Yeah. Like, she's so good at manipulating all of these men on the island, but also just cannot cover her tracks for the life of her. No, <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing. It's... I, but I, I love the, um, the, the textures in this book with the colouring as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at that page where she brains Gus... And the blood is spilling out across the floor, and just the the textures that they've done there, it, it's so nice. I mean, like yeah. it's it's gory, so it's not nice. It's not a pleasant thing, but it is so pleasing to look at the way that they've done that artistically. Yeah, Mark used some really interesting uh, reds in that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all I, kind of glow. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, like when she's a. Uh, beating up the reporter with the bloody spirit level and the the blood is is like you said it's so vibrant yeah like it 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 looks like cuz it's such some warm tones and vibrant tones it looks hot yeah it, yeah yeah but yeah she just kicks the crap out of the reporter and walks off <laughs> doesn't check whether she's dead or or anything no. She just makes an impulsive decision and gets out of there. Right? Yeah. It's just, yeah, just everyone in this island is just walking from one reckless decision to another. Yeah. Every single one of them. It seemed like Swampy was the only one that had anything under control because he hadn't been discovered yet. <laughs> yeah, we don't even know what a fuck up he was because he died too early. Yeah. Um, we but, just have to assume he was maybe a competent person. But maybe not so competent because he was walking around with a big bag of money. I don't know. Yeah, right? But I mean, like, everybody knows that Penny and Penny's men are the drug dealers on the island and they can't do anything about it, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he was just doing that to keep playing his part. Yeah, maybe. But uh, And also, you know, like, he had protection. Because he was actually an undercover cop, so they weren't. He wasn't going to get arrested. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this this final sort of scene that I'm going to leave the book on right now for everyone to look at is the the scene of Standard sitting on the bonnet of the car as the sun sets over the island. Oh yeah, that was a really nice panel. Yeah, thinking about how he came here for summer and how he could have left, but he decided not to, and he's just become resentful and bitter and but just this is such a beautiful page like that sunset is incredible the use yeah, of the yeah. black inks just blows me away i still struggle with that sort of thing yeah <laughs> it's hard it's it's a fantastic page but seriously yeah if you if you are a fan of noir stories and like want a, just a, a little bit of a different energy to one this is a really good read. Yeah. It's like a classic noir. Yeah, it's it's got all those <laughs> story beats and like the the classic tropes of a noir, but the Oop. the island vibes and the sharks and and whatnot really make it a bit more fun and interesting and I uh, I had a blast with this book and I think you will too if you want to go and read it right now. Yeah, go read it right now. And grumble. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Go go get this, read this, go get Grumble, read Grumble, then go watch the episode where we talk about Grumble. <laughs> and then share both of those episodes on your social media so yeah. that we yeah. more people will come and watch the show. For sure. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of taking us towards the end of the hour. So where can people find you and your work? They can't anymore. <laughs> I'm in hiding. <laughs> uh, no, like, uh, my Twitter is still, like, semi-active. Uh, I still haven't learned how to use Instagram, so it's there, but I, I don't use it very much. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, um, that's fair. <laughs> uh, my Twitter is Marissa Draws. Uh, my DMs are open uh, for polite things. And uh, right now, I am working on books for DC. And a bunch of stuff that's not announced. I think I have a thing coming out from Mad Cave. Nice. Well, yeah, keep go follow Melissa on, on Twitter and follow for updates when the next books come out because everything that Marissa works on is going to be really interesting and exciting and fun because you have incredible taste in books and your work is incredible. So go do a follow. I will link some relevant stuff below so that you can find that information easily and some of my favorite books that Marissa has worked on I will put in the description below as well. Um, and obviously, yeah. I am Brainbeast Studios on all social media. You can find me there. You can find No Capes on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter now. We have a, a account just for the show. And if you want to help support the show, like, share, subscribe, all those good things are great. And if you want to help the show grow and continue to get bigger and better and more interesting and help me make more comics myself, check out my Patreon linked below. It starts at five bucks, which for US and UK people is like two or three bucks. And uh, once I hit like 10, 15 subscribers for more than what I've got, I will have enough to start paying page rates for all of the short comics I'm writing right now. So that's exciting, that's exciting stuff. And I would love to get working on those ASAP and not have to rely on anthology submissions to get them made. Yeah. I really want to get into some anthologies, but it would be nice to not have to rely on anthologies to get my comics made. For sure, for sure. So thank you, That's everyone. For... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Marissa, for coming on the show. I well, no, you're up there. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate your time so much. Uh, we've been trying to organize this for a little while, so it was really fun to finally get to sit down with you and chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know it's evening for you, so I appreciate you uh, sacrificing some of your Friday night to have a chat. Yeah, it is Friday night, isn't it? It is. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, subscribe, share, please. The more people that share the show and the more people that interact with the videos, um, obviously then that means that the show will get pushed up in the YouTube algorithm and more people will see it. And the more you share it on Twitter and Facebook, the more people will see it. And that means I get to keep making this show. And I love making this show, so please help me do so. Uh, but yeah, as always, <laughs> thank you to my wonderful guest, and uh, keep reading comics. Bye Yay. for now. Bye. <laughs>